the Prophet ﷺ was buried adjacent to the original masjid. During the time of Umar and Uthman, due to the increase in people, a southern extension was made with a gate, Bab al-Salam, the gate of peace, to allow people to visit the Prophet's grave more easily. Visitors today will come through the southern extension and give their salutations to the Prophet ﷺ. His two companions, Abu Bakr and Umar, are buried next to the Prophet ﷺ, so the visitor moves slightly to the right to pay the respect to these two companions, may Allah be pleased with them. During the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ, he described an area in the masjid between his house, which is the noble chamber today, and his pulpit. Between these two lies an area known as Rauda, which the Prophet ﷺ described as a garden from the gardens of paradise, a place of immense blessing and reward. The most well-known opinion is that this area is the area demarcated today by the green carpet between the minbar and the noble chamber. Other definitions suggest Rauda may be greater than this area, while others suggest it may be smaller, confined to an area demarcated by the columns with the vertical red trim seen here. In Rauda are Ustawana, columns that correspond to the location of the original date palm tree trunks that supported the masjid at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Some of these columns have important historical significance. These columns are known according to the green signs placed on them, the first being the column of the bed which is the place where the Prophet ﷺ used to rest on a mat during his spiritual retreat in the month of Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ would also pray at a certain location, praying the Tahajjud prayer behind the house of his daughter Fatima, which is also near the area where the Ahl al-Suffa, the people of the bench, the poor companions, used to stay. Next to the column of the bed is the column of the guard. During the times when the Muslims feared being invaded, some of the companions, including Sayyidina Ali and Saad ibn Abi Waqqas, used to stand guarding the Prophet ﷺ at this location. Divine revelation would later inform the Muslims that Allah would protect the Prophet ﷺ, and there was no need for any guards. The next column over is the column of the delegations. Here the Prophet ﷺ would receive and meet the delegations from the tribes from all over Arabia. Moving back to the column of the bed, and then to the right, is another column, called the column of Abu Lubaba. This column marks a spot where the companion Abu Lubaba, after committing a sin in his diplomatic mission with Banu Quraida, chained himself. He pledged that he would not leave the column until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forgiven him. After a number of days, divine revelation came to the Prophet wasallam, indicating that Abu Lubaba was forgiven and he unchained himself. Since it was his repentance that freed him, both spiritually and physically, the column is also called the column of repentance. Next to the column of repentance is the column known as the column of Aisha, named after the wife of the Prophet ﷺ. After the death of the Prophet, Aisha, considered amongst the greatest of scholars and authorities in Islam, said that in the mosque was a column that had such blessings that if the people knew of it, they would draw lots to pray there. When her nephew, Abdullah ibn Zubair an, was seen praying here afterwards, the location of the column was confirmed. Many of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ used to pray here. During the time of the Prophet ﷺ himself, when the direction of prayer was changed from Jerusalem to Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ led the prayers at the column of Aisha for several weeks. He then proceeded forward to pray at the location of the perfumed column and led the prayer here for a short time before moving to the permanent prayer niche, the Mihrab Nabawi, just to the left. The perfumed column is also the location, by some accounts, of the palm tree trunk that the Prophet ﷺ used to lean on as he delivered his sermon. The companions later built an actual pulpit for the Prophet ﷺ, where the pulpit is today. When the Prophet ﷺ began using the new pulpit, the tree trunk he used to lean on began to whimper and weep, so much so that the entire congregation in the mosque could hear it. The tree trunk did not stop its weeping until the Prophet ﷺ placed his hand on it.
to comfort it. One of the leading scholars of the early generation of Muslims, Hassan al-Basri, would comment on this event and call to the people and say, O oh people, the tree trunk, the piece of wood, yearned and wept for the Prophet, longing for him. You are the ones who should really yearn and long to meet him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.